My name is Rose Wakiria. I'm a financial and retirement planner. Basically what this means is that I help individuals and families to plan their finances and for those who are approaching retirement, I work with them to work on a retirement plan. So basically I work with people to help them make better decisions about their finances so that they can live well, eventually enjoy a, a happy or comfortable retirement. So my work entails, uh, first of all, a lot of education. I do a lot of webinars. I write on personal finance and retirement planning. I seek to educate people in that field. And then when I sign up a client, if it's a corporate organization, I'll basically be training their employees. Or if it's a retirement benefit scheme, I'll be t training their members. Uh, when I sign up individuals now who come for one-on-one -on -one coaching, that entails me working with either one or various members of a family to get to know them. First, I get to know them, or what are their values about money, uh, what do they want to achieve in life, and then I help them to review their finances. Uh, we look at what assets do they have, what liabilities do they have, how, how are their incomes, their expenses, and then we look at what do they want to achieve in life, either in the short term or even in the long term. And then we work on a plan to help them using the resources they have to achieve their goals. So it's a very interactive process that involves getting to know people, uh, helping them clarify their decisions, clarify their goals, prioritize their goals, and then work on a plan to help them achieve them. But another part of it is I also sort of keep them accountable because uh, I keep on checking on them. You're supposed to have done this. How are you doing? Are you facing any obstacles? How can I help you overcome those obstacles? So that's the interesting, the most interesting part of my work, working with people to see them come from a position where they were not clear on probably what they want to do and moving on to having clear goals and ways of achieving those goals. My background is in financial services. I started my career 20 years ago uh, with insurance companies. And basically, all my career, I have been dealing with retirement benefits and employee benefits. So I worked in that for a long time, basically starting from operations, or where basically you're taking care of business in the books. And then later, I moved on to the sales role. Uh, so talking to individuals, organizations, helping them to set up retirement benefit scheme. So having worked there for about 17 years, I always felt like I want to go out there and try my hand in business. And I decided to go and do now, not just the transactional aspect, which is basically what most financial services do. They help you create a savings plan. But for me, I went to help people beyond that, uh, because for you to come up with a savings plan, there's, there are a number of decisions you will have made. So I help people with that. So I didn't know what to do, but uh, one day uh, we, as, as the, in the organization that I was working for, we decided to be meeting the retirees, people who have already retired. And since there isn't much you can do with them, because once they convert their savings into income, they get their money on a monthly basis. We're like, how can we engage them further? So we decided to meet them and just hear how they're doing, how they're settling in retirement. And it was apparent that many of them were struggling. And these are not people who probably had come from very low income earning jobs, many of them were earning a lot of money, even their pension income was good money. But they kept on saying they did not prepare well. So that is how, uh, and they kept on saying, can you go back and tell the young ones that they need to start early and many other things. So that's how I decided, okay, let me do this. There's still the financial aspect of it, of helping people set up their retirement benefits plans. But there's also the other part of encouraging them to save clarifying uh, them, I mean, helping them clarify where they should save and any other obstacles that they may have. So that is how I started um, Next Move Consulting. So Next Move Consulting basically trains and does coaching. So training to individuals and organizations, either staff or members of retirement benefits or any other group of people who might be interested in training. So I take them through financial planning, uh, basically the whole issues of budgeting, uh, saving, getting to know how much to save, where to save, where to invest, and taking care of all life transitions because they all come with financial obligations, and then ultimately saving for the big transition, which is retirement. 
So I started this in 2017. We are close to four years now. And we've helped many people uh, clarify their goals and come out of debt, set up retirement plans and be on their way to enjoy retirement. Yes, it's always an interesting uh, uh, journey working with people. I normally do this through a, a minimum of six sessions, which normally takes about six weeks. So most people will come because they have a challenge or they, they lack clarity in something. And it's always interesting to see them now clarify their goals. Some come with debt issues. They are heavy in debt and they don't know how to get out of it. It is usually very interesting to see as coming up with a plan and maybe six months, 18 months down the line, somebody calls you back and tells you, oh, by the way, I'm out of debt. What happens is that many people will come with a financial issue, but in most cases, that issue will probably be hiding another issue. Let me give an example. Uh, you may have a client who comes, uh, they are not able to save, not because they don't have the money, but probably they don't have the time. Uh, to take, I mean, to study what companies are offering and be able to clarify what they need to take. So we find that in as much as we solve the financial problem, we tend to solve other issues, which could be now time management. And we come to see, okay, how can you take care of your interests as well as you take care of your work and other things? Um, so it also involves a lot of non-financial work. Um, it could be probably the issue you have at hand is... Um, you have adult children and you, 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 are, you are struggling with the decisions of how do I pass wealth to the next generation or you're wondering about are my children managing their money well? So it involves a lot of things. 99% uh, of my clients always uh, give very positive feedback. Uh, most of them achieve the objectives exactly why they came to see me, but the majority of them will also realize that we solved another problem that they didn't even know was a major issue. I would say from my perspective, my greatest legacy would be building a team, helping people to grow in their career um, and being able to stand on their own and actually do a lot more. Uh, when I look back at the team I helped build while at Britam, I'm very proud of them. Most of them were very, very young, but they've been able to do very well in their career. So I'm very privileged to have been part of their development process. Personally, maybe I think my greatest legacy would be raising a child uh, uh, to see her grow up to be an independent person. The job is not yet done. I haven't finished doing that. And so my prayer is that I'll be able to raise her to become um, a God-fearing person who will be able to make a contribution in society. For the future, I hope to help uh, individuals and families to manage their finances well so that they can live balanced lives. Um, I think uh, having worked in corporate, I saw how busy life can be, how work can take over most of your time, and you tend to neglect other very important aspects of life. So my goal is to help people take care of their finances because as long as the finances are not in order, people tend to focus more on them. And once they take care of the finances, that will free them to actually focus on all the other aspects. Many people would want to find out what their purpose in life is, but that rarely happens when your finances are not in order. So I would want to be part of that growth process with people, help them find what uh, they desire to do and they can actually do it because they don't have to worry that they don't have food on the table, they don't have school fees for their children. So I would want to be part of that. Uh, I would want to be part of an industry that helps uh, transform probably our financial advisors into more financial planners, go beyond the transaction. Um, hopefully our, in our culture as well, people will be open to embrace paying for financial services. Uh, financial planning services. Many people would want to do it, but when they hear there's a fee, they don't want to spend. But this is a very important aspect uh, because with just a, a few shillings, you pay a professional to do this, then you'd probably save yourself a lot of cost and time and be able to achieve your goals faster. So five years, 10 years from now, I would want to see uh, a financial planning and a retirement planning industry that has taken shape, uh, that is recognized, and that people are actually 
having the confidence to seek their services out. Today, I would say there is balance. Um, it was not always like this, but I believe now I'm doing, uh, I'm balancing my life well. Uh, what I have learned over time is that the most important things tend to be the ones that are easy to neglect. I'm talking about family, I'm talking about your health, I'm talking about relationships. Uh, so what I have done is that I map my time with the most important things first. So I need to map my time with my daughter, I need to map my time with other important uh, social relationships that I need to engage in. For example, I'm a member of a, a, a small group or fellowship group, I need to ensure I'm available because that takes care of my spiritual nourishment. I need to make sure I'm available for my church meetings, for the um, speaking engagements that I need to do to help people grow. And then I make sure now my work works around that, as opposed to having work in the middle and have it, having everything around that. Of course, I benefit from the fact that I'm in self-employment. I can plan my time. I can decide today I'm not going to work. I'm going to take care of something else. But even while I was in employment, I remember I tried to do that um, uh, sooner after I joined the, the sales function. That was around 20, 2010. Um, I was a single mom at that point, And I realized that unless I take care of this role, chances are my daughter is the one who will suffer the most. So one of the things I did then was to ensure that I have dinner with my daughter three times a week and I used to live very far from my office. So my commute was like one and a half hours and used to have dinner at 7.30. That means I had to be home before 7.30, three times weekdays. That means I only had two days where if I needed to work late, I could. But um, it wasn't easy uh, to implement it, but I was very determined about it because I knew I needed to do it. And with time, I actually was able to do it. So it just meant that I would have to plan my working hours very well. Uh, I'm a morning person, so I would start early uh, when there's less interruptions, and then I would be able to accomplish what I need to accomplish. And then I'm free to go and attend to my other responsibilities. The other thing I did was to ensure that I take my annual leave. I used to take a minimum of three or two weeks, and where possible, I would even take the entire month. Uh, this was not easy, and especially when you're in a sales role. Uh, I remember the first time um, when I had a new boss, I wanted to go on leave in August when my daughter is on uh, school break, and I realized I have to start telling him early. So I started talking to him in June. Oh, by the way, I'll be going on leave in June, in, in August, and I want to take the whole month. And he was like, why would you want to take the whole month? And I explained, this is the time my daughter is available and I would want to spend more time at home. And fortunately for the first year, I was on target. So going on leave was not an issue. But there were other years when I was not on target. And I'm saying I want to go away for a whole month or three weeks. But what happened is that with time, uh, I got into an arrangement with my boss whereby he realized that this is important for her. And I used to ensure that I have my leave. Of course, that also meant that I have to take care of the staff. You have to train them well so that they're able to take over the responsibilities that you are required to do so that you're free to actually go and, and, and do that. So I, I believe many people can achieve some level of balance. It doesn't mean that everything will be balanced all the time. Uh, sometimes you'll need to work late, and I actually would do that sometimes. For example, you have a very big tender, very big client, and sometimes you'd work even late into the night, 2 a.m., to ensure that the document is accurate. But that was not my normal way of working. I made sure it's not my normal way of working. So other people fear that my boss cannot give me three weeks of leave, but probably you just haven't tried. Uh, if you asked, you might be surprised that they'll be willing to give you leave. So when I, I find something is important, I set my mind to actually go ahead and do it. I've gone through various challenges. Uh, if I may start with my personal life, um, I've been a single mom since my daughter was seven years old. So that means you're, you're, you have to take over most of the responsibilities, and, and especially when it comes to time. Uh, the father was still actively involved in her life, still actively involved up to now, 
and also trying to balance that relationship uh, with your ex. But uh, we've been able to have a civil relationship and we're able to co-parent uh, in a healthy way. Uh, earlier on, I, I lost a child and that was also a very difficult time which affects not only you emotionally, but it also affects your ability to perform at your work. Uh, so one of the things I have found helpful is to actually seek help. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't take too long trying to figure out how will I get over some of these things. If I can get professional help for something, I would act, I'll actually go and look for it. So that, that's one of the things I did, especially when I lost my child. I look for professional help, uh, counseling, and even when uh, I lost my marriage, I also got professional help. And that helped me get back on my feet much, much faster. Of course, rising through uh, a career is, is challenging. Uh, it has its own challenges. Uh, being a woman and you want to grow uh, to the C-suit, that was also a challenge. But I would say that I also worked in an environment that um, gave women the opportunity to actually prove themselves. And if you're doing your job well, then there were no hindrances to that. But that was not uh, necessarily easy uh, working amongst uh, where the bulk or the, 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 the majority of the team members are men. Uh, my other challenge was uh, when I decided I want to transition from employment to go into self-employment. I had a good job, a stable job that was paying well, I was doing well, and it was very, very scary to leave that behind, to go into something you've never done before. You're not even sure if there's a market for your services. Uh, you're doing something, you don't even know someone else who does exactly what you do and how they fare. And, and that was also quite uh, difficult. But I was determined to actually go and try my hand in business. And through a lot of prayer, seeking God, trusting God that he will actually show me the way, I, I, I took that uh, chance. And even in self-employment, um, once you start running your own business, uh, you have to adjust a lot of things. Your idea while leaving employment is not necessarily what the market is interested in. And of course, even there, at, at one point I was doubting myself, did I make the right decision? Uh, should I continue being in this field? Uh, but I've been, I've persevered and I've been able to, I would say right now I, I have a um, solid footing on what I am doing. My greatest highlights, I would say one of them was um, doing well in the retirement benefits industry. The other highlight was um, the transition into self-employment. And recently I have authored a book on retirement planning. Uh, this is a great highlight. Probably I'd want to spend a few minutes talking about it in the sense that I struggled with English a lot in school. Actually, it was my lowest grade in my KCSE uh, transcript. And so I always knew I would not, I cannot write. But last year when COVID hit and it was difficult to do trainings or to meet clients, I wondered what can I do for my clients? Many are worried about the way the economy is going to turn out. Will their savings be okay? So I just decided to start writing brief um, newsletters and I would use scripture to encourage them and tell them, stay there. I mean, don't change your plans drastically. Uh, this is, something that will come and things will get better. Uh, after some time I decided, okay, fine. Um, there are these common questions people ask me about retirement benefits, about retirement planning. And that is how I set out to write this book. So it's, it's retirement planning explained in easy to understand language. There's no jargon. It's just like we are having a conversation and I try to address retirement planning in a holistic way, not just financial, but also how do you prepare socially? How do you prepare psychologically? And even how do you prepare your children? Because they are part of that process. Retirement is a family transition. And if you don't prepare them well, they could actually impact your preparations. So this is one of my biggest highlights um, so far. I've talked about helping Britam uh, to grow, to become one of the leading providers in the insurance industry, building a team, uh, being able to help people be the best that they can be. And even today, helping individuals and families to clarify uh, their financial goals 
and to be able to manage their finances well. To see somebody who was heavily in debt come out of debt within a very short period, that is usually very interesting. And even to see somebody just gain clarity on what they want to focus on financially for the next few years, that gives me great joy. A uh, biggest lesson I've learned is that with God you can achieve anything. Yes, it's important that you seek God because right from the beginning, He's the one who created you and He knows what he set you here on earth to do. And many times we struggle trying to find that out apart from God. But I've relied on uh, my faith in God, prayer, seeking him out, uh, guide, his guidance, and with that you will never go wrong. So it doesn't matter what is out there. Uh, he's seen me through the past and I believe that he'll even see me through the future. But there are basic things that we need to, to just know uh, as a young person. You've, you hear all those stories from your parents, your uh, aunties and older people that start saving early. Um, don't wait until you learn that for yourself. Please take their advice and start saving early. Where can you save? There are very many products that you can save in, but probably one of the products I can mention is look for a money market uh, plan. Go to Capital Markets Authority, uh, study about uh, the money market plans that are there or unit trust products that are there. Those are simple basic products that you can learn with and you can experiment with because they, they's very, it's very easy to join and also very easy to leave in case you don't think it's the right product. I would say live within your means. Uh, don't spend more than you earn uh, because when you save and invest, that is the surest way to meet your future goals. And don't think that you have a lot of time. Uh, we just, I graduated about 20 years ago. It just seems like just the other day. So the next 20 years, I would actually expect them to move much faster than the past 20 years. So don't take too much time. Start saving, start investing, plan for what you want to do with your money. If you want to enjoy life, that is also part of what you can plan for. But uh, don't, don't spend all you have or don't get into unwise use of debt. That will trap you into a cycle that will become very, very difficult to get out of. And ultimately, read scripture. Everything that works in the financial world is actually in the scripture. So one of the places that you can actually seek guidance from is in the scriptures. And again, if you are still struggling to make your plans or to do this investment, seek help. Be ready to spend a few coins that will help you move even much faster and do even much better. Mm -hmm.